I'm starting to think it would just be safer for all of us to assume that every powerful man has done something bad and then be pleasantly surprised if they don't. Hello, hello, I'm Kelsey Joe. this is Thought Couture, and this is not the video I was expecting to post this week. I've been working on my first real commentary style video essay. The news broke that two women have accused the beloved writer Neil Gaiman of SA. Like many in the reading community, I've been having a lot of thoughts about this, and I wanted to open up a space to chat about the situation, not only about Gaiman himself, but also the effects of author worship. This is going to be a short, casual discussion rather than like a full-blown rundown of the details. At this point, we're only dealing with allegations, and I do not claim to know what is or is not the truth. In case you've recently emerged from the deep sea and have not heard, a young woman who worked as Gaiman's nanny in 2022 filed a police report against the author in New Zealand claiming SA, and at the time, she was in her early 20s and he was 61. Another woman who considered herself a fan of his alleges that he abused and SA'd her in the early 2000s when she was 20 and he was in his 40s. Gaiman outright denies both allegations, claiming he was in consensual relationships with both women and he believed that consent had been established during all of these encounters. Neil Gaiman is one of the rare writers who achieves icon status. Uh, he's responsible for uh, the Sandman series, uh, Coraline, Good Omens and American Gods, all of which have become literary and media sensations, so unsurprisingly much of the book community is shocked and reeling from this news. There are many readers and writers out there who credit Gaiman with getting them excited about books and literature and inspiring them to become writers, and who are now feeling crushed and betrayed, understandably so. Personally, I've never been a real fan or follower of his work, uh, though I did love a few of his books as a kid, specifically Coraline and the Graveyard Book, and I read his short story collection Smoke and Mirrors maybe six or so years ago, and I thought it was fine. Uh, I can see the appeal of his writing, but it's just not really my style. But I am a fan of his ex-wife, the musician Amanda Palmer, and when I was at one of her concerts in 2016, he was there. And this was two days after the election of Donald Trump, and as you can probably imagine, this was an incredibly liberal audience, so we were all feeling some kind of way, and Gaiman like came onto the stage and read everyone Good Night Moon, which I've always held since then as just a cool memory to have. You know, how many people can say, oh, Neil Gaiman read you Good Night Moon at an Amanda Palmer concert? But that is soured for me now, <laughs> to say the least. The accusations are horrible. Uh, I would encourage you to seek out the full story if you want more info and feel okay doing so. I don't want to go too far into the details just for everyone's comfort here, and I'm not, I'm not a news source, and that's not my goal here. And even if the encounters were consensual, as he claims, which I'm not saying they were, what he has admitted to reveals that Gaiman is not someone who understands boundaries, power dynamics, or professionalism. Starting a relationship with an employee 40 years your junior, mere hours after meeting and hiring her, is not appropriate or acceptable behavior, no matter how you slice it. Not to mention, he's also claiming that the former nanny has a mental disorder that creates false memories, and so his, his defense is essentially bitches be crazy, which is not something a nice person says. Of course, this brings up the difficult question of what do we do when writers whose work we adore and perhaps personalities we admire turn out to be flawed human beings at best or criminals at worst? That's not directed towards Gaiman specifically, just in general. Because not only is Gaiman beloved for his writing, but he had a reputation of being a good guy. You know, someone who stands up for the outcasts and the underdogs, and who sees art as a means of giving a voice to the powerless. You know, in short, someone who would never do something like this. So unfortunately, this is a rude awakening for a lot of readers. 
And I can sympathize with this internal struggle. Uh, it's no secret on this channel that I am a Virginia Woolf fangirl, and I often struggle to reconcile my love for her writing and for some aspects of her personality with the fact that she was racist and classist and anti-Semitic, and she was a feminist, but her feminism did not extend to all women, like not even close. I don't have a great solution other than accepting that multiple things can be true at once. Wolf was a brilliant writer whose work helped shape the course of literature and affects me emotionally, and she was a flawed human with some deeply problematic ideas and beliefs, and I have to be comfortable with the fact that all of those things are true. Worth acknowledging real quick that this is a slightly different situation given that Wolf is very dead and reading her work will not support her financially, whereas Gaiman can still profit from his continued leadership. So that's just something to keep in mind if you're uh, thinking about what you want to do in this situation going forward. That said, in my opinion, it is up to the individual to decide how and if they want to continue relating to Gaiman's work. I don't think anyone can or should assert that all Gaiman fans must discard their books of his and turn their backs forever. That may be what some readers choose for themselves, that might feel right to a lot of people, but it's just not going to be that simple for everyone. The art and the artists we love often become an integral part of who we are as people, they become aspects of our identity even, and divorcing ourselves from a part of ourselves is an enormous task. I mean, case in point, I just called myself a Virginia Woolf fangirl, which is a very different thing from saying she's one of my favorite writers. Like, that's a, a different kind of relationship. What's concerning me, though, is a sentiment I'm seeing pop up pretty frequently on internet discussions about Gaiman. Uh, comments along the lines of, oh, at least we still have XYZ. XYZ would never do something like this. But that's what we said about Gaiman. Some common names that are coming up, uh, Keanu Reeves, pretty much top of the list, uh, Ian McClellan, the late Terry Pratchett, uh, who co-authored Good Omens. One reason I wanted to make this video was to caution people not to assign a moral superiority to celebrities based entirely on their public persona. Because ultimately, we don't know these people. We don't know what they're really like behind closed doors. And doing so just sets ourselves up for disappointment and disillusionment if and when they do do something wrong. Not to mention when author worship or celebrity worship in general becomes extreme, as I think it can and has for many Gaiman fans, those fans may end up perhaps blindly supporting their icon and dismissing the claims or even going so far as to attack the alleged victims. In turn, that's how we end up, at least in part, in a culture that lets horrible people get away with horrible things, because we refuse to believe that our heroes can be horrible people who can do horrible things. I think there's an argument to be made in Gaiman's case that because of his iconic status, he could have been getting away with inappropriate behavior for decades, precisely because he is so charming and charismatic and powerful. Who is going to tell him no? Who is going to say that thing he's doing is wrong? Of course, that is mere speculation on my part, but that is something to think about. I hope moving forward we can learn to maintain a healthy distance from the people and the artists we admire and remember that they are fallible human beings who can do wrong. Though I was sort of being facetious in the intro, I do sometimes think maybe not that we should go so far as to assume that every powerful public figure is a perpetrator of violence, but at the very least, not assume that just because they are capable of making great art, and more specifically great art that we like, they are great people. I think about the culture of celebrity worship a lot, like a lot a lot, <laughs> whether it's writers or musicians or politicians, and in my opinion it is so toxic and it needs to end, and perhaps we can now start dismantling it, even if only in the bookish sphere. That's as good a starting place as any. To end with a slightly more positive tone, uh, not that the opinions of a strange lady on the internet really matter that much in the grand scheme of things, certainly not in this sort of situation, 
But if you're a big Gaiman fan who is feeling a lot right now, uh, I'd like to remind you, if no one has yet, that you are not the people you admire. You are not the people who inspired you. You are your own person, your art and your writing are your own creations, and if you do credit Gaiman with sparking your love of literature or inspiring you to become a writer, I don't think you have anything to feel guilty or ashamed of, because how was anyone supposed to know his true colors? Well, that is it for me today. Uh, just a short, casual video to get some thoughts out there. Uh, I do think this is an important situation for the reading community to address and process. I sincerely hope the women who have spoken out are taking care of themselves and they have strong support systems to help them heal and move forward. Uh, feel free to leave any of your thoughts or reactions you may be having in the comments below. Uh, keep in mind, though, do keep it respectful. Uh, any victim blaming or the like will be removed. As always, thank you so, so very much for watching. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.